see all of you out this morning as we continually and slowly kind of come back to uh, normal, I guess you would say, here at St. Paul's. Uh, today we have the sixth Sunday of Easter, and Pastor Roth, we're blessed to have Pastor Roth uh, preaching today for us. A um, couple of brief announcements uh, for those that are online. Uh, just a brief welcome, and as always for those online, we just ask that you to identify yourself as well as sharing this and for the rest of you here, uh, just a reminder, throughout the uh, middle of the week, we are postponing communion on Sundays uh, for the time being. Uh, so if you are uh, wanting to have communion, communion is being served Tuesday through Thursdays from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So you just simply call the church office and get that scheduled uh, here um, at the church during the middle of the week. Besides that, um, we wanted to also mention, too, uh, this news went out this last week. The Higher Things Youth Conference in Colorado has been canceled and so the Board of Christian Ed is looking at some different options, maybe late, <clears throat> late summer, early fall, to do something more local with the kids, uh, pertaining towards the, um, uh, getting the kids out, and also pending, I should say, on the uh, circumstances on the ground with uh, COVID-19. So just a brief mention for that to you as well. Again, our order of service here is Divine Service Setting 3. We are on Easter 6 today, and our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 549, hymn number 549.
ask congregation to please stand as we turn to the top of page 184. Page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro it on the inside of the bulletin, singing it to the tune of C. With a voice of singing declares this with a shout of joy to the ends of the earth, alleluia. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob, alleluia. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. I cry to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God. Because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy be to God on high.
Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Or they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and I believe that I come that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figures figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess the one holy faith as expressed in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 192. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 548, hymn number 548. Grace, mercy, and peace be and abide with you all through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation today is taken from the epistle lesson from the first letter or epistle of St. Paul to a young pastor named Timothy who was like a son to him. And he gave him some pastoral advice saying, for you yourselves know, brothers, I'm sorry, I've got Thessalonians. That's not the way it goes. Let's try that again. For, first of all then, I urge you that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and for all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is a testimony given at the proper time. This is the word of our Lord. Dear friends in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, well, finally, it's good to be back together once again, is it not? I would think that maybe we should take these pews out and perhaps put recliners in there because that's what you're used to now. Each recliner should have a coffee cup holder. And I think the ushers should probably be walking around with crafts of coffee to refresh your coffee. We probably need to relax the uh, standards of dress a little bit and come in our jammies with our blankies and all that. Maybe bring a pet to be on our lap or something like that. And I wondered if maybe we shouldn't have, with all this tape here, have as our sermon hymn, Don't Fence Me In. 
But it is great to be back together, is it not? Uh, a couple times in my life I have been quite ill and was not able to worship. And this last six weeks or so, it's the same where you know what David meant when he said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I recently heard that many people during the, cor the course of this coronavirus thing have been updating their wills because in view of this pandemic, they don't know if perhaps they are not going to be around very much longer. It is said that St. Paul's second letter to young Pastor Timothy is his last will and testament. There is some thinking that maybe even the next day Paul was put to death because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Paul knew at any rate that his death was near and so he gave him some last minute advice to Timothy. But in his first letter, this isn't really necessarily this last will and testament, but it's a, a time of an older pastor, Paul, giving pastoral advice and instructions to a young pastor, Timothy, who is in charge of various different pastors uh, in their various congregations. And St. Paul entrusted the care of these pastors to this young pastor, Timothy. Timothy was very dear to him. In fact, he referred to him as his dear child. He said, for example, in his introduction to this letter, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. In the verses immediately preceding the verses of our text for today, St. Paul said, This I charge I entrust you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. So, what advice did Paul, this older pastor, have for Timothy, this younger pastor? Well, first of all, the advice was concerning the prayers of the congregation that were in, under the charge of young Pastor Timothy. These prayers were supposed to be made, Paul says, not just selfishly for ourselves, but for all people. Paul told Timothy, first of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Timothy was evidently in charge, as I said, of a number of pastors and their congregations, not just in Ephesus where he lived, but throughout the entire region. And so St. Paul tells him that uh, it would be good that uh, they would pray for all people. And they were to pray in four ways. First Timothy was to tell them to pray that God would fill all their needs. This implies a humble feeling of our great need for God's blessings. That God who only can give us those blessings, only can give us those things that are good and wholesome for us. And secondly, Paul urges Timothy to approach God with reverence, recognize him as Lord of heaven and earth, and bum humbly bow before him. And thirdly, we are to come to God's throne of grace, near him in childlike trust, making our wishes known to him, knowing that he will give us not necessarily what we want, but what we need, not necessarily what we think is best for our life, but what he knows is best for our life. And fourthly, Paul tells us we are to come to God with thanksgivings, gratefully acknowledging all those past mercies that God has so richly showered upon us, answering our humble and worshipful and trustful request. One commentator said concerning this thankfulness for the undeserved blessings we have received, and I quote, as such it may be and will subsist in heaven, will indeed be larger, deeper, fuller there than here. For only there will the redeemed know how much they owed to their Lord. And this while all other forms of prayer in the very nature of things have ceased in the entire fruition of things prayed for. End of quote. Paul says these prayers are to be, as I said before, not just selfishly for ourselves, but for all people, as Paul puts it. This means that we as a church pray for people throughout the world. There may well be millions of people in the world who don't pray at all. But yet, as congregations pray for them, no one will left, be left unprayed for, if you will. This means that we pray, believe it or not, for leaders throughout the world, even those who are our enemies. The prayer of the church are not limited 
to us, but rather to all who need our prayers. And so why would we think of praying for those evil men who are our enemies? To what end is it that we even pray for them? St. Paul tells us about this. He says that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. When life is, as Paul puts it, peaceful and quiet, then the gospel can spread to more people throughout the world without being hindered. That's what Jesus wanted the disciples to do. Just before Jesus ascended to heaven, he said, It is not for you to know the times and seasons of that the Father is fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That would be like God... Jesus telling you and me today, I want you to go and tell the good news of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, first to Minot, and then to Ward County, and then to the state of North Dakota, and then to the United States, and finally to the entire world. And life, when life is peaceful and quiet, it's easier for those who are weaker in the faith and those who are younger more individual than for individuals who are more mature Christians. In fact, uh, the church uh, is, continues to rule in the way that uh, we uh, or is notable way that uh, we are living a tranquil and quiet peaceful life in fact we're told that godliness and life is necessary at the same time godliness and gravity however disorder and wild undisciplined dis- conditions in a country have especially cruel persecutions harm the weaker members of the church, and thus the church herself, experienced as abundantly proved. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, have permitted themselves to be drawn away from Christian confession and life, and have lost salvation, no more living in all gra- godliness and gravity. St. Paul makes it clear that he really does, God really does want all people to be saved. Paul says, this is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. This is why God promised again and again throughout the Old Testament that he would send a Savior. For example, as soon as Adam and Eve fell for the temptation that was given through the, by Satan through the serpent and ate of that forbidden fruit, already then God promised that he would send a Savior. As he was cursing that serpent through, whom, uh, through which Uh, Satan had spoken. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his head and he shall bruise your heel. Yes, this Savior, Jesus, would have his heel nipped in that he would die a horrible death on a cross for you and me to pay for our sins and the sins of the whole world. But in so doing, he would crush the head of Satan once and for all. And then some years later, God promised Abraham that God would bless the whole world through his descendancy, that is Jesus. We're told now the Lord God said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. And then some years later, King David was promised through the prophet Nathan that a savior would come from his descendancy. God promised David, moreover, the house declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall come from your body, and he shall build in that house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And of course, you know who that is. That is Jesus. And then again through the prophet Ahaz, or Isaiah, Ahaz was promised that that Savior would be born of a virgin. We're told, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, which we know means God with us. And even the birthplace of the Savior is foretold. Through the prophet Micah, we're told, But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. All these promises were fulfilled in one person, Jesus. 
In the account of Matthew regarding the birth of Jesus, we're told, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Jesus made it clear why he had come to earth when he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus came to be the mediator, the go-between, if you will, between God and man. There is only one God, period. St. Paul makes that clear in the words of our text for today where he said there is one God. And the Bible tells us here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And again, the Bible says there is no God but one. And Jesus is the one mediator between that one God and man. St. Paul tells us in the words of our text for today, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Oh, Satan will try to accuse you and me. He'll try to convince us that we're so bad we should never think that we would go to heaven. After all, look at all the sins that we have. We don't deserve heaven at all. We might as well just give up. But we have the best defense attorney in the universe. We have Jesus defending us. Jesus, God's word tells us, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you will not sin, may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus has the authority to plead our cause to, because he has paid for our sins in full through his death on the cross and through his resurrection. In the words of our text for today, Paul tells us that Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all, which is a testimony given at the proper time. Jesus left his throne in heaven, came down here to earth, lived the perfect life we couldn't live, and then as that one perfect sacrifice, he laid down his life so that you and I could have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. And then he took it up again when he was raised on the third day. Jesus himself told his disciples, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. It is through faith in Jesus Christ, and only through faith in Jesus Christ, that we are saved. God's word tells us, and there is salvation in no other name given among men, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And Jesus himself tells us, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, as Paul, this more experienced pastor, gives advice to a young pastor, Timothy, he wrote words that are still applicable to us and meaningful to us even today, 2,000 years later. Paul first urges us to pray for everyone. And then Paul reminds us of the fact that God wants everyone to be saved. And finally, Paul reminds us of the fact that Jesus mediates between us and God based on the fact that Jesus died on the cross and, and rose again to pay for the sins of all mankind. Yes, through faith in Jesus Christ and the work that he accomplished for us on the cross, there truly is salvation for all. For this may we give all thanks and praise and honor and glory. May that all be given to God, the triune God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the only God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes our frail human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in faith in Jesus Christ until life everlasting. Amen. This congregation will stand for the offertory.
As a way of reminder, the offering plates are in the back during this COVID-19 interim. Also, offerings can be dropped off at the church, uh, mailed into the church office, or conducted through the church website at anchormina.com. Maybe see it for the offering music. congregation to please stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you tenderly invite us to bring our petitions before you and you promise to hear us 
Keep us, we pray, steadfast in the faith that we might ever cling to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has overcome the world for us. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, we thank you for raising up faithful pastors among us to care for your holy flock. Fill them with your spirit that they would never tire of preaching Christ and him crucified. For the salvation of all who hear and believe, Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, keep this nation under your care and bless the leaders of our land, especially Donald, our president, Doug, our governor. Preserve us in safety, liberty, and livelihood. Heal our divisions that we may be people of peace among ourselves and blessings to the others and other nations of the earth. Give us grateful hearts for the freedoms we enjoy and for the men and women who have given their lives to keep us free. We ask you also to preserve all who work in emergency and medical fields. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, extend your compassionate and caring hand toward all who suffer tribulation in this sinful world. Spare us from this pestilence and its effects, and look with mercy especially upon the destitute, homeless, and those impoverished in our inner cities. Motivate your children to be doers of the word and not hearers only, that they would be your instruments of love to help and assist those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, look with mercy upon all those who are sick or suffering in any way. We pray especially for Carl and Charlotte, Dason, David, Elaine, Glenn, Gloria, Janice, Jeff, Sharon, Sophia, Sharon, Tom, Lisa, Jay, Silas, Chase, Barry, Naomi, Mahaley, and Lawrence. We also pray for the family of Dennis Othout as they mourn his loss. Restore each and every one of these individuals to health or give them strength to persevere and to endure. Above all, comfort them in the sure and certain knowledge of their Redeemer, that their Redeemer lives, and that they may have promise of eternal life through him, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Taught by Lord and trusting in his promises, we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Congregation may be seated for our departing hymn, hymn number 837.
Just a brief reminder as we uh, depart here today, um, we ask that everybody just exit straight out the very back of the doors here. Uh, reminder too that the uh, Bible study uh, is going to be conducted online. And so that starts at 9.30 from 9.30 to 10 o'clock. So if you make it home in time, you can tune in for that. And that is on the church Facebook page as well. Uh, so Lord bless and keep you this week. Again, reminder for communion during the middle of the week if you so desire. And we'll plan on seeing you guys next week. Lord bless and keep you. Amen.